radio and television be at your fingertips. Get news and current events, entertainment, sports, kiddies programs and more at your beck and call on Aliamoye TV and radio. Just visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on all social media platforms. Then you are a global citizen. Aliamoye TV and radio. Voice of the voiceless. Aliamuye TV and Radio. Good afternoon. I am Mudukbe Akinye Soye. Here are the top stories. President Tinubu calls on United States business community to invest in Nigeria. Ogun considers special courts to try courts. In business, Nigeria's solid minerals sector valued at over 700 billion. On the foreign scene, Iranian women face 10 years in jail for inappropriate dress. In sports, Bayan beats Manchester United in seven-goal thriller as Sasna Dazu on Champions League return. Details of this and more coming up shortly. <music> Welcome back. Now the news in details. President Bola Tinubu on Wednesday rang the closing bell at the Nasdaq stock market in New York, calling on the United States business community to invest in Nigeria's bubbling market. President Tinubu, who is attending the ongoing 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly as accompanied to the bell ceremony by the President of the U.S. Africa Business Center at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Court, ASNA. The closing bell ceremony held at the seven-story tower of the Nasdaq headquarters in New York signifies the end of a trading session. The Nigerian leader cited the removal of a lot of the bottlenecks including the fuel subsidy, which he described as corrupt, adding that his administration had retooled the exchange rate to a reliable, dependable one figure floating of the exchange Naira. The federal government said this year's Independence Day celebration October 1st will be low-key and would not feature the unusual ceremony at Igu Square, Abuja. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, said this year's Independence Day would be a time for reflection to think very deeply as a people and the journey forward. Akume revealed this on Wednesday to State House correspondent after he emerged from closed-door talks with Vice President Kashim Shatima at the Asorok Villa, Abuja. <music> The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayode Ariwala, has expressed concern over the significant volume of cases, particularly those of a po political nature, that urges attacks with handling daily. Justice Ariwala spoke on Wednesday during the swearing-in of recently appointed justices of the Court of Appeal in Abuja. The CJN also advocated a production in litigation and a greater emphasis on alternative dispute resolution methods, which he argued would reduce the workload of justices and conserve valuable resources. He advised the newly sworn in justices to uphold their reputation and flee from temptations which might come with juicy gifts. The swearing in of the nine justices brings the number of judges from 79 to 80. A special court is to be established by the Ogun State Government to try court-related cases. Also to be set up as a joint anti-courtism security task force comprising all major security outfits with a mandate to rid the state of the menace of courtism. The state is also proposing an amnesty program for would-be courtists who may wish to surrender their weapons. These decisions were arrived at after a joint security meeting held at the governor's office of Kemoso Abiyokuta of the state on Wednesday. It will be recalled that Governor Dakbo Abiyodu on Tuesday hinted that his administration would enact a law that would pronounce the death penalty of anyone caught engaging in court activities in the state. The governor spoke during a visit to the palace of the Akaribu of Remoland, Oba Babatsudi Ajayi, following days of court related clashes in Shagamo which left many dead and others injured. The meeting, according to Governor Abiodo, focused on providing adequate measures to eradicate courtesy in the Gateway State. 
The Under State House of Assembly has served an impeachment notice and on the State Deputy Governor Loki Ayedatua over allegation of gross misconduct. The House served Ayedatua the notice on Wednesday after an emergency plenary session in Akure, the state capital. In the petition signed by nine of the 26 members of the House, the lawmakers also accused Ayedatua of abuse of office during his time as acting governor of the state. The Speaker, Olamide Oladiji, directed clerk of the House, Benjamin Jai Olato, write the deputy governor informing him of the allegations levered against him. The Bochi Governorship Electoral Tribunal has affirmed the re-election of Bala Mohammed as the governor of the state. Delivering judgment on Wednesday, the tribunal dismissed Abu Bakr and his party, the All Progressive Congress, APC, challenging Mohammed's victory in the March 18 governorship election. Chairman of the three-man panel, P.T. Okwaha, said the petitioners failed to prove beyond reasonable doubt the alleged manipulation of the bimodal voter accreditation system, VIVAS, in the election. He said the petitioners' witnesses presented evidence based on ESA as they were not at the polling unit. In another development, the governor of Kano State, Abba Yusuf, said he has instructed his legal team to file an appeal against the ruling of the election petition tribunal that nullified his electoral victory. In a message posted on the platform X on Wednesday night, Yusuf described the tribunal ruling as a temporary setback. In a judgment delivered on Wednesday via Zoom, the tribunal ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to withdraw the certificate of return to Egypt to Yusuf. The tribunal also affirmed Yusuf Gawuna of the All Progressives Congress, APC, as the duly elected governor of the state. Reacting to the judgment, the governor called on the resident to remain calm and be law abiding, adding that people should not take law into their hands. Meanwhile, the police in Kano have declared a 24-hour curfew on the state following the tribunal judgment, sacking Abba Yusuf as the governor. A statement by the Commissioner of Police, Mohamed Gumel, said a team of security operatives have been dispatched across the city to enforce the curfew. You are listening to the World News on Aliyamoye TV and radio still to come. Business, foreign and sport news. Stay with us. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us to the rest of the news. In business and economic news, Minister of Solid Minerals Development Dele Alake said Nigeria is well placed to meet the global demand for critical solid minerals. Alake spoke on Wednesday on the sidelines on the ongoing United Nations General Assembly in New York. The minister said, despite being behind other African countries in mining, Nigeria's mineral deposit is valued at over $700 billion with huge potential for increase. The minister, who made the case for direct foreign investment into Nigeria, said the country is ready for collaboration and partnership in the solid mineral sector. On the foreign scene, Iran's parliament has passed a controversial bill that would increase prison terms and fines for women and girls who break its street dress code. Those dressed inappropriately face up to 10 years in jail under the bill for which a three-year trial was agreed. It, it, it is still needed to be approved by the Guardian Council to become law. The move came a year after protests erupted over the death in custody of Massa Amini, who was held by morality police for an allegedly improper hijab. In the existing world of sport, Bayern Munich held on to claim a 4-3 win over Manchester United in their UEFA Champions League group match at the Allianz Arena on Wednesday. The German champions put aside their wobbly form to pile more misery on Eric Ten Hag and United in the goals first. The win sees Bayern continue a record extending 14-match winning streak in a UEFA Champions League group stage and an unbeaten run at home against the Red Devils. In other matches, Arsenal scored thrice in the first half earned route to a 4 0 win over PSV uh, Hendhoven in their first UEFA Champions League match in six years. Bukayo Saka, Alejandro Trossard, Gabriel Jesus, and Martin Odegaard were on target as the Gunners strode to an easy win. 
Nigeria striker Victor Osime provided an assist in a police win at Braga, while his compatriot Sadiq Umar was a 72nd minute substitute in Rio Sociedad's draw against Inter Milan. To end the world news, a quick recap of the major stories. We said President Bolatinibu called on U.S. business community to invest in Nigeria. We will consider special courts to try courts. In business, we reported that Nigeria's solid mineral sector valued at over $700 billion. On the foreign scene, Iranian woman faced 10 years in jail for inappropriate dress. In sport, we also reported.